Hey everybody, I just saw a video from my friend Wes Boss where somebody gave him the challenge that's in front of us in JavaScript and said, I was asked this question in an interview and I could use your help solving it. So Wes proceeded to do a great job of solving it in JavaScript and I thought as a Laravel programmer, I work in JavaScript half the time and PHP half the time. So what would it look like to solve the same challenge in PHP? Unfortunately, array manipulation in PHP is not so great, but we have Illuminate collections from Laravel, which gives us a lot of the same functionality that you have for collections in JavaScript and um, Ruby. So I thought, why don't I try and mimic basically what Wes did? So I'm not trying to do it my own way. I'm trying to do the same operations in the same order that Wes did, but in PHP to kind of show what it would look like there and make sure we actually can do all the same things. So let's get started. The, the, the kind of the idea here is this added up method is gonna take as many arrays as you want, each of which have a name, and then they have a, basically a bunch of individual values that we're counting up. So goals, assists, and points, but you can see in this later one, we have other ones. So PPG, PPA, PIMS. So I don't know a ton about sports, but I'm imagining this is a game or a season. This is a game or a season, but you can notice it's the same people. Joe Brown, Jim Bob, Harry Styles, Craig Mack. Craig Mack, Jim Bob, Joe Brown, and I typed this wrong. This should be Harry Styles. Um, so what it, you do is basically it sums together all the goals, goals here, goals here, but also all the ones that don't exist in both places, it assumes it's zero in this one. So there's a little bit of complexity here, plus we can pass as many of these as we want. So what you might originally think is it's just going to take array one, array two, but again, remember, you can pass as many as you want. So in old school PHP, we'd use this thing that was func get args, which basically gives you an array of all of the things that were passed in. But in more modern PHP, we can use the rest operator instead, and we can just say, I think he called it arrays of data. Um, and so it basically gives us that same thing. The cool thing about spread is that you could also, or rest is you could also do you know, A, B, and then that, which you couldn't have done with func get args. But basically this is just gonna take all of the parameters that are passed in and wrap them up in array. So we'll have an array that has the first entry, which is a array one, the second entry, which is array two. The problem is to do all this addition, what we really wanna do is flatten them down into a single entry. Um, and so at least we're doing it the way uh, that Wes did. And so what you'd think you'd do is, well, first of all, we're gonna convert this into uh, an Illuminate collection. So we say collect arrays of data, and then you probably wanna flatten it just like we did because his was end up being basically data.flatten. But flatten is a little bit different in Illuminate than it is in JavaScript. So if you take data flatten like this, and then we do the output, we see that it's flattened it so far down that we have an entry for their name and other their points for each of these. So what we wanna do is say, don't flatten it quite so far, only flatten it one level. So we say flatten one, and then we run it again, and now it's giving us what we want in general. So it's not perfect because as you can see, we've got Joe Brown, Jim Bob, Harry Styles, Craig Mack, and then you've got them all duplicated again. So we need to basically be able to uh, reduce them together by basically creating entries where Joe Brown's value from one line and Joe Brown's value for another line are basically added together. So the first thing we want to do is uh, find some way to iterate over all of them. There's a couple different ways to do that. You can use array map, but what Wes did was reduce. So we're going to try Wes's right here. We're going to say reduce and each of these is going to be an individual item. And then we're going to say what we're going to start with. We're going to start with an empty array here. And so this is just mimicking the same thing he did. So if you're not familiar with reduce, reduce basically says start with this and then pass it in a carry, which is basically the last one plus whatever you passed in. So this is the carry here. And then you've got your item, which is the you know one of the items that you're passed in through here. Um, so this would be an item. 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 So first of all, first thing that Wes ended up doing was just saying, okay, cool, let's just make sure we've actually got it. So console log, I think what he said was working with and then the item name. So let's see if we actually get the output we want here. Uh, we've got a little bit of error here. Oh yeah, so I'm building these things using console table and console log, which don't exist in PHP and I'm writing them as I go. So as you can see, I'm finding places where I make a mistake. So I'm just gonna, Let's see if I return the item. Does it get rid of that error? Okay, cool. So working with Joe Brown, working with Jim Bob, working with Harry Styles, working with all these people. So basically we can see that every single time we're operating through this, we're being passed in one of these individual rows here. And we're also getting this carry, which just starts as an empty thing. And so what we wanna do is start building it up. So each entry in this um, array is keyed by a name and then it has all these values assigned together to them. So the first thing we wanna do is figure out basically what are their names gonna look like? Um, so I'm thinking we do it kind of the same way he did, which is we say carry and then their name. We don't have their name yet, but we can grab it real quick. Equals, if the name's already set um, with some values in it, we can you know use that. And if not, then we can do just an empty array. 
Um, and then of course we need to get name equals uh, item name. Okay, so what we're saying here is basically um, in this empty array right now, create a new entry um, or an update an existing entry. Um, just basically what we're trying to do is just make sure that we have an entry for every single uh, person who's in there. So if we run it again, then we don't get what I was expecting. Oh, because we're supposed to return carry. Okay, so now we have an entry for Joe Brown, Jim Bob, Harry Styles, Craig Mack. There's not anything attached to them, but at least we have an entry for every single one of them. So the next things we wanna do is be able to operate through all the points and basically attach them as properties for each of these people. So we need to be able to get an array that is basically all of the things off of item except for the name. And there was a cool way to do this in JavaScript with uh, object destructuring or array destruction. I don't remember what it's called, where we basically say const name, oops, my goodness, name points equals uh, item, right? Well, we can't do that in PHP. We do have array discretion, but it's not exactly the same. And I asked the folks at Titan and there was some really clever solutions, but none of them were just native. The simplest native way to do it is just to say unset item name. You know, we've already pulled it out to a variable here. We can now unset it and now item contains just the points. So what we want to be able to do at this point is say, we want to set every single bit of the points if it's already set and if it's not already set, or sorry, if it's, if it's not set yet, we want to set it to equal to be whatever it is on this one. If it's already set, we want to add it to what it's already there. So basically we have now set that there's going to be the name set. And then we want to say for each um, item as key value and then we want to basically add something in there so sometimes it can be hard when we're inside of things here to figure out exactly what we're dealing with so let's just take a look real quick so we've got a name we've got a key we've got a value right so let's just go see where does that leave us what properties do we have so we've got joe brown goals zero right so joe brown goals zero so what we want to do is make sure that this joe brown item um, this entry right here has a goals thing and if it's set to zero or if it's already exists that's set to whatever exists plus zero all right so we basically want to say carry name because that's our joe brown um and then we want to say uh goals so that's our key so if we want to say if it's set then we want to do something to it. And if it's not set, we do something different. So let's just start with the simplest way of doing it. If is set, carry key, do this. Otherwise, do that, right? So what do we wanna do if it's not set? We wanna say carry name key equals value, right? Because if it hasn't been set yet, then the goals or whatever should be just what was just passed in. But if it's passed in and it's already set, it needs to be its existing version plus that. So we can just say plus equals value. Right? And I know there's different ways to do this, but we're sticking with the way that uh, Wes did it right now. So what we've done now is say, we flatten it down, we iterate over every single one, we grab the name and get rid of the name, so now we have items just points. Uh, we make sure that at least an entry exists with this name, and then we iterate over all the points columns, and if that points column has already been defined for this person, we add to it, and if that has not, we just set it to be the same thing. And then we return it back. So let's see what that gets us. All right, so Joe Brown has zero goals here and zero goals here. Okay, let's see. Joe Brown, Jim Bob has three goals. We got two here and one here. So it looks like it's adding them all up together the way we want. So I'm pretty sure we actually just made it the whole way through everything we needed just there. And one of the things that Wes did was said, well, what happens if we add something here that's not in this existing structure? If we add dog uh, and dog has woofs, or I, I forget what his was, but I'll just, we're gonna do woofs. What do we end up with? How flexible is the system? And it looks like we've got a flexible enough system that that dog has woofs and everybody else has zero woofs. So that's the basic way to do it in PHP. There was one interesting thing that I saw um, where somebody mentioned that, I, I think it was in the comments, and one of the things I love Wes does is he puts the solution out there and then he basically says, what do you all think? What's a better way to do it? And I bet you that some of you are gonna come along and show me a cleaner way. And that's actually really great. I intentionally didn't go too far in optimizing. I wanted to reproduce what Wes had done in, in collections and that's it. So I'd love to hear if you all say, well, either Wes didn't know this, or maybe this is something you do in um, Illuminate Collections that you can't do um, in JavaScript. This is just a PHP reproduction of Wes's. So come in with the comments, show me some cool ideas. But the one thing I saw somebody say was, I think what they did was they set it to zero if it's not set, I think. So something like carry name 
key um, equal, man, I'm trying to remember what it was, but you're basically saying if it's set, you know, set it to what it is. If it's not set, set it to zero. Uh, that, right? So if it's set, set it to itself, otherwise set it to zero. And then you can just say plus equals val because you now can just trust it. So if that's right, let's see if it's right. Do we get the same numbers? 0318, 05110, 0828. Yeah, so I think we get the same number. So basically, we get, got rid of a conditional and we moved it into basically be like an instantiation of this value at zero, sort of like we did here. Um, and then we operated on it, sort of like we're doing here. So instantiate, operate, instantiate, operate. So here, that's one quick refactor of what Wes did. So again, like I said, don't consider this the final way to do it. There might be some really cool optimizations. Anytime you see a full reach inside of something like this, you go, that's kind of nasty. There's probably something we can be doing better here. Um, and of course, you all know that we could do this. You know, we can just kind of like layer this on here. But what other cool things are there? Do you have another cool solution for this? You got any ideas for how to um, work through this, this full reach? Just uh, let me know in the comments. And uh, until then, thanks for tuning in. All right, so it is the next morning. I shared this video with some folks at Titan and Allison Kirk said, why didn't you also share the native PHP version so that people can see both? And I thought that's a great idea. I intentionally used Illuminate collections because the syntax is so similar to JavaScript and Ruby's, you know, you got dot reduce and dot flatten, but you can do all these things in native PHP without any dependencies. And sometimes it's very clumsy. A lot of times when you need to do a lot of these operations one after another, because you're using um, a param or method calls with callbacks and stuff like that, you end up getting things nested and nested and nested and nested or lots of temporary variables and it's kind of nasty. Whereas you get a fluent call when you're dealing with Illuminate collections. But this is a really simple operation that we probably can do without too much additional code. So let's Let's take a look at it. So we got two things we're doing here that we have to figure out how to reproduce in native PHP. We've got flatten and reduce. Reduce is easy because we have a array reduce as a built-in PHP function. And the only difference about array reduce is instead of, like I said, instead of being a fluent call on something you've already built, you instead take this function and you pass in the data you're operating on and then the function and then what you're starting with. And we can also just say, just re return this, right? So that's pretty pretty manageable for us. We didn't have to change the syntax very much. There is, however, no array flatten function call. Turns out, though, there is a pretty easy trick that we can use to get around that. So if you remember, this is the rest operator, which says if I pass in lots of parameters into add it up, collect them all and throw them into an array. Well, there's something that's called the spread operator. It does the same thing, but in the opposite when you're passing data like this into a function. It says take an array of data and apply each one as a parameter to this function. So it's basically unresting it, right? It's the opposite of rest. So what we can do is, if you imagine array merge, which is something we're all familiar with, array merge ARR1, ARR2 would give us exactly the outcome we'd want, right? We'd get these four and these four together in a single thing. Well, how do we get array one and array two together as parameters? Well, they are correct collected into an array here. So we just use the spread operator to uncollect them. So we can just basically say our data equals array merge spread and then arrays of data. And so this right here basically gives us that, um, I think I can console table it, data. Yep, so this gives us that joined version that we wanted just using this array merge. So this right here, using array merge and then the spread is basically the same as um, array flatten would be. And then once we have it flattened, we can use this array reduce thing. And then let's see if we get what we're looking for. And look at that, same outcome as we had from using our Illuminate collections, but now all uh, native PHP. So thanks, Allison, and thanks for uh, the rest of y'all. And again, still, even though I had this little thing, I still wanna hear any other refactors, any other cool ideas, share them in the comments.